Hello students, how are you all? Welcome to my channel. So students, today we are going to discuss about the next poem of Standard 9th book, NCRT book, Beehive. And the poem name is The Lake Isle of Innisfree. Now this poem is written by W.B. Yeats and he is also known as William Butler Yeats. So in this poem, basically William Butler Yeats was a nature poet who used to talk about nature more. Because he loved nature and for him, nature was the ultimate healer or you can say nature was the ultimate teacher. So here he is talking about nature, that how he is influenced by nature and how he loves nature very much. So in this poem, he is talking about the same idea of loving nature. Now this uh, poem has three stanzas and per stanza is four lines. And what actually the poet is talking about is, he wants to go to his boyhood place which is Innisfree. Now Innisfree is poet's boyhood place or you can say his village where he used to live in his childhood. So when we will read the poem, you will understand everything. So let's start. The first stanza says, I will arise now and go now and go to Innisfree and a small cabin built there of clay and metals made. Nine bean rows will I have there, a high for the honeybee, and live alone in the bee loud day. Now in the first stanza, the poet is talking about uh, his uh, intense desire for going to inner sphere. He says that I will arise and go now. He says that I will wake up and I go now to inner sphere. Inner sphere is the place, again I will tell you, it is uh, poet's boyhood place or poet's village. And a small cabin built there of plain metals made. And what poet has done over there? He has made a small cabin. Small cabin, you can also say a small house, which is made up of clay and metals. Now, what is the meaning of clay? Clay simply means mud soil, which we use in village areas to build our houses. And metals means fencing. The fencing which we surround our house with, so that uh, there can be a protection for our house. No one can enter, no one can trespass our house. So clay and wet is made. He also wants to have nine bean rows will I have there, a hive for the honeybee and live alone in the bee loud clay. Now what poet says that he wants to uh, have a plantation, he also wants to do some plantation over there and that too of bean rows and that bean rows uh, that counts for nine. So he says that he wants to have bean rows where he wants to cultivate beans and that is also of nine bean rows. He also wants to have a hive for the honeybee. Now he wants to have a hive means a hive means a honeycomb. So for honeybees also he wants to have a shelter and that is honeycomb. And the word used over here for honeycomb is hive. And last line says and live alone in the bee loud clay. Now what poet says he wants to live alone there because uh, he loves nature and if he is living alone then he can enjoy nature at the fullest. So he says that he wants to live alone in the bee loud glade. Now the word glade means open space or open area. So this is all about the first stanza. Now let's move to the second stanza. And I shall have some peace there for peace comes dropping slow, dropping from the waves of the morning to where the cricket sings. There midnight's all a glimmer and noon a purple glow and evenings full of linnet's wings. So what the poet says in second stanza is, I shall have some peace there. Obviously if we visit nature, if we visit to some natural place, we feel peaceful over there. Why? Because the nature is very calm and relaxed over there. For peace comes dropping slow. According to poet, peace comes dropping slow. And how? Poet says in the next line, dropping from the wheels of the morning to where the cricket sings. So what poet says, the peace can be obtained by dropping of the wheels of the morning. Wheels means the mask of the morning. Now what is the new wheels? The mask. And to where the cricket sings. Now the word cricket means uh, an insect which generally makes sounds at night. So here the poet is talking about the wheels of the morning and the sound or the songs of the cricket. And also he says that their midnights all a glimmer and noon a purple glow. So here he is talking about three times of the day. First is midnight where he says that in midnight in nature where I go to inner sphere there is all a glimmer. Now the glimmer means shine. 
जो तारे चमक रहे हैं तो वो उसे इंजॉय कर रहे हैं नेचर पोएट जो है विलियम बटलेजॉइंग दैट एंड नून और पर्पल ग्लो एंड ही ऑल्सो सेज दैट द नून इज ऑल अबाउट पर्पल ग्लो सो ही कंपेयर द ग्लो ऑफ दिस सन रेज विद अ पर्पल कलर ओके एंड लास्ट लाइन सेज एंड इवनिंग फुल ऑफ मिलियन स्विंग्स and what he talks about evening time is he says that evening time is full of linnet swing now linnet is a small bird so poet is talking about a bird which he says that evening is full of linnet swings mean all the birds are flying over there at in evening okay now let's move to the last stanza of the poem i will arise and go now for always night and day i hear the lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore While I stand on the roadway or on the pavement's grey, I hear it in the deep heart score. So what poet says over here is, I will arise and go now, for always night and day. So in order to go to inner sphere, he is always ready to do that. Why? Because he is so much attached to his nature. He feels that whenever I will get time to visit there, I will definitely visit to inner sphere because he loves that place. Second line says. I hear the lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore. So he is also talking about the lake water lapping. Now, what is the meaning of lapping, students? Lapping means splashing sound. Whenever the water level, or you can say the water waves are splashing, or they are flowing against something, then they make some splashing sound. So here, same with the poet says that I hear the lake water lapping, making splashing sound with low sounds by the shore. So they are obviously. Uh, they are uh, flowing against the shore, and at that point of time, they are making some splashing sound. And because of that, poet is loving that. Now, last two lines says, "While I stand on the roadway or on the pavement's grey, I hear it in the deep heart score." So, actually, in the last two lines, what poet indicates is, right now where he is is some modern area, or you can say, right now currently is living in some uh, modern city or urban area, from where he is talking about inner sphere. he wants to go to inner sphere but actually right now he is in some city area and actually he says that i am not really enjoying this environment which is full of skyscrapers and long and huge buildings but actually he is uh, very much attached to the natural greenery of nature because obviously he was a nature boy so he says that while i stand on the roadway or on the pavements grey now the here the word pavements mean uh, means concrete road which is generally found in city area we don't find that roads in a village area so that same thing poet is talking about here is that while i stand on the roadway or on the pavements grey i hear it in the deep heart score so he says that whenever i am standing whenever i i am remembering about my place which is inner sphere i always feel the sound of that nature in my deep heart score so that is all from this poem i hope you understood students and if you understood this poem if you are well aware of the poem now you can share this video and also you can like this video if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel students and uh, i hope you understood and thank you so much for watching the video and keep learning keep growing thank you